Hi, my name is Sonia Allen and I'm a Salem artist and I work with Salem Art Association as a teaching artist. And I'm here at the Bush House in Sally Bush's bedroom to work with you on a sketchbook idea. And I'm going to be showing you um, my sketchbook and some things that you can do using your imagination. I have a sketchbook that has a black cover that I can decorate. You can use any kind of sketchbook you want. You can even use copy paper that you staple together or store in an envelope to be your own portfolio of artwork. It doesn't matter what you use, just that you have something that you like to draw in. The goal of this sketchbook um, project is that you would use your imagination and your eyes to investigate your world and to draw things that you find interesting. So we're going to be doing a little bit of that together. I'll show you my sketchbook. I decorated the front and the back and what I'm going to do is show you how we did that. The materials that I use are colored pencils and a pencil, a pen, and an eraser and a glue stick to if, I, if I want to collage anything on. You can use whatever you want. You could use crayons, you could use markers, you could use chalk, but it's kind of messy, um, or you can use colored pencils. Whatever you have that you like to work with is a great thing to use in your sketchbook. So for our cover, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw one big thing on the cover. It can be your initial, or it can be a thing that you draw really simply, but big, that tells us something or shows us something about you. So I'll show you on the back what I did. I drew a beet, a big vegetable, because I like vegetables, which is maybe kind of weird, but I do. So I drew a big vegetable, and then I colored it in, and then I colored the background around it, and I colored in the word veg as my name of what this is. On the front, I did a big S for my first name. It also is the first letter in the word sketch. And I wrote that right there. I colored in my object, which is the letter, and then I decorated a background around it. And that looks really fun on a black background. So I'll show you how that looks on the inside of my sketchbook that's still empty, okay? I'm going to show you how we did this, or how I did this, on the inside of my cover, since it's blank. First thing I want to do is use my imagination. What is something I could draw that would show you something about me or what I like? So with my pencil, I'm going to draw something really big. That means fill up that space. Don't draw something teeny tiny because you can't color it. Make it big. So probably as big as your hand. You want to make it kind of nice and plump so that you have lots of room to color. So I'm going to draw, think, 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 think. I'm going to draw a big, very simple teacup because I like to drink tea and it's going to sit on a saucer and have one handle. Now it's very very simple there's no details and I'm going to color that in. After I color it in I'll add my background so that I don't have to try and make color the teapot, the teacup, on top of a background. That gets kind of hard. So first thing I will do is add color to the teacup. Okay. I'm going to be adding colors to my drawing of my teacup. And I'm going to color gently. That means don't push real hard. And I'm going to layer colors on top of each other so that I can create a blend or new colors as I go along. So I'll start off with, hmm, let me see, I think I'll start off with a little bit of yellow. 
and I'm going to trace the outline. Whoops, my pencil snapped and that's okay. And I'm going to do my coloring in little tiny circular movements. Like if you were coloring a cloud, and when you do that, you make sure that you fill in the, the shape without getting streaky lines. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but that's okay, take your time. This is your sketchbook. And the whole idea is that you use it like a playground where you can imagine and invent and draw what you like. So I'm gonna add some layers. I won't color the whole thing because it's more fun if you get to color than if you watch me color for an hour and a half, right? I think you'd have more fun. So I'm gonna color a little bit and show you what it looks like to layer. My goal is to color the whole teacup. Then after I color the teacup, so we're gonna pretend that I've colored the whole teacup, then I'm going to color a background. And it can be anything I want. I can just do swirls of color. I can do designs. I could do little shapes if I want to. On here, I did shapes in the corner and I just did streaks of color around the um, edge like a border or a frame. On the background, I just did little swirls of color as a background. So with my teacup, I think I'm going to do stripes and squares because. So I'm going to take a different color. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this light green and I'm going to make some green stripes. So this is my back, my decoration. You can see that I've just started coloring, but when I do the whole thing, it will be completed all around. This is what my background looks like on the back, all completed. And this is what it looks like on the front, all colored in. The other sketchbook activity that I'm going to do with you is travel journaling. And that means using your sketchbook to draw things that you discover in the world around you. It could be in your house, it could be in your yard, it could be in your town, it could be on a trip. So we will start with a journey inside, in the house, and it could be in your classroom. So I will show you, first of all, one that I did in my house. I looked in my dining room for something that I thought was different or unusual or interesting to me. And I drew it. So I found this antique or vintage coffee urn. It's like a coffee server. But instead of being silver, it's copper. And so I drew it. Then the imagination part comes in. I look at that and I say, now what could I add to that that would be different? Something I could make up out of my imagination and draw that in as part of this. It's not real, but I'm going to add it in. So I thought, and I won't let you think with me as long as I thought, because I thought a long time, but I came up with little hearts instead of coffee. I thought, now that's funny. It's different. It's not real, but I like it. So I drew some little hearts dripping out of the spigot of the coffee thing. And then I colored the whole thing in. And the last thing I did was I looked at that and I said, what could I call this piece of art? I'm going to give it a name. And I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, I know. People have coffee first thing in the morning. And it's their fuel. So I called it first fuel but it's hearts. So start your day off with hearts or feeling happy or loving or 
have a cup of coffee too. Anyway, so I drew that in and I colored everything in and this is my inside or indoor travel journal. I found something interesting and drew it, then I imagined something I could add to it and I gave it a name. And then what I'm going to do is show you that here at Bush House in Sally Bush's bedroom. So I'll get a new piece of paper in my book. And looking around here, there's all kinds of things that I can't touch but I can draw because that's a way for me to have them in my memory and in my sketchbook without having to touch something that's off limits or not safe for me to touch. So I'm going to use my pencil and I really like this vase. It's kind of a neat shape. So I'm going to draw really big on my page. This is called a spread. So I've got the two pieces of pages here, the two pages, and I'm going to draw right across them as if it were one page. You might bump when you get to the middle. It's okay. If you make a mistake, use your eraser or don't. Do what every artist does. They go, ah, and they have a minute of panic, and then they go, yeah, but I'm in charge, and I'll turn it into something I like. So you might see me make a mistake, and I might just go, I'm not going to erase it. I don't worry about it. So I'll use this so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to draw the outline of this. I'm not going to worry too much about fancy details. But I'm going to draw the curves. And the shape. And try not to drop my book. And I'm going to think. This is time for imagination. What can I do with this vase to make it different, to make it interesting. Now, normally, we put flowers in a vase. In this vase, I think I might put, um, I think I might put a paintbrush. So what I'm going to do is draw a paintbrush sticking out of the vase, and I'm going to draw a pencil there, and I'm going to draw another paintbrush over here, and I'm going to have it dripping some paint. Now, I drew one big thing, I added some things to it that weren't there, and now I have to think of what to call this. I think I will call this toolbox. It's not a toolbox. It's not screwdrivers and a hammer. But these are the tools that an artist uses, and I like that name. So I'm going to write toolbox at the bottom. You can just write it, or you can do bubble letters and color them in. So I think I will do big fat letters, like they're balloon letters. And they don't have to be perfect. But if they're fat letters, they're easy to color in. Oh, X's are goofy. Oops, forgot the inside of the B. There we go. Toolbox. So I have my object, I have the things inside, and I have the name that I gave it. And now, what you do is you color it, just like we did the cover. You color the object and the words. You layer colors however you feel like. Work gently so that you can add colors on top. And then when you're done, you can color a background or a frame.
around your picture. When you color the background, it's a good idea that you make sure that your color is different than whatever color your object is. So if I did a blue vase, I wouldn't want my background to be blue. I'd want it to be something totally different so that they show up against each other. So a blue vase against a yellow background or a yellow vase against a blue background. That works. The second sketching activity that we're going to do together is an outdoor travel journal. And that could be outside. It could be um, in your yard. It could be someplace you go as a family or on a trip. And what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to find something that is interesting to draw, and we're going to draw it. And then we're going to use our imagination to invent something new that we can draw into that picture. So I'll show you one that I did. I drew this little whirly gig porch decoration. It's just this swirly thing that hangs on my porch because it's a really interesting shape. So I drew that big on this page. And then when I came inside, I said, hmm, what does that make me think of? And I thought, it makes me think of a playground. It makes me think of being on a swing. And I remembered that when I was a kid, my mom had a little tiny wooden monkey that hung on one of our lamps. So I drew that monkey kind of big, much bigger than it would be if it were really hanging on this thing. So I just invented, made it really big. And I drew him hanging on to this whirly gig, made him gigantic, and then I colored everything in. And then I said, what could I call this? And I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, well, this is a whirly gig, but it's kind of swirly. And I thought, oh, I'll call it a swirly gig. So I wrote swirly gig. I didn't use bubble letters, but I just wrote it in. So that's the three parts on this one too. Find something interesting and draw it. Invent something out of your imagination and draw it. And then give it a title. You can also draw something that shows where this might be in your invented um, picture. And so I drew a tree branch that this is hanging from. So. Invention and imagination, so important. Nobody else can see what's in your imagination unless you put it down on a page. And nobody else can imagine what's in your head. So you're the only one in charge of it. So that's what we're doing. We're having a place in our sketchbook to imagine. So what I will do is I'll go outside and show you how I did this. I'm not going to draw every branch of this tree because there's too many. I'm going to draw the main curves that I find interesting so that I can see the idea of why I like this tree. So I will start drawing as simply and big as I can. So I drew my idea of that cool Japanese maple. I didn't draw all the branches. I drew the interesting shapes, the interesting ones. And now is the part where I come up with something out of my imagination to add to this drawing to make it mine. So I have the crazy sketch of a tree. It looks like a lot of lines because I haven't colored anything in yet. And when I look at it out there in the winter, I think of rain boots. And I want to draw a pair of red rain boots. Well, I'll draw them in pencil. Color them red. Down at the bottom of the tree like it's a tree wearing rain boots. Because I think it's funny. So, that's my imaginary part. So I'm going to draw them on here. And I will make them up as I go along. So I drew my rain boots at the bottom, like this is a tree 
walking around in rain. So now I want to show kind of where this might be. So I'm going to make a puddle like this tree is standing in a puddle of water. And I'm going to put a couple of little splashy bits of water, little water drops. So I have a tree wearing rain boots or galoshes standing in a puddle and I'm going to call it something. And another word for rain boots is galoshes. And I'm going to pretend this is a bush. And I'm going to call it a galosha bush because I like that. So galosh. A bush. And then I can outline that, or I mean, I can go over it again with my colored pencil to make it darker. But now I know what it is. It's a galosha bush. I love that. At Bush House. Oh, I didn't even think of that. It's a galosha bush at Bush House. I think I'll write that in. Isn't imagination cool? Okay, so I have drawn it, I've imagined it, I've named it, and my next job would be to color it. And what I'll do is I'll just color the boots so you can see that part. So they're gonna be red galoshes, or boots, rain boots. So I'm gonna color them in nice and strong. So, pretend I've colored the whole boot in. I'll leave a little highlight on the toe so they look shiny. So that's the start of my coloring, but I just wanted to see my plan. And when the boots are all colored, then I'm going to color in the water. and then I'll color in the puddle. And the last thing I'll do is color in my tree and then my background. And then I have the whole thing, my galosha bush at Bush House. That's my outdoor travel journal. Another cool thing you can do with your sketchbook is to collage torn pieces of paper, either plain or colored, by gluing them onto your drawing. So I'm going to tear and cut or tear and color small pieces of drawing paper that I can glue on my tree to look like leaves. Thank you for doing this sketchbook journaling project with me. I hope that with whether you use a sketchbook or whether you use your own copy paper at home and keep it in a folder as a portfolio, that you play with your sketching ideas Play with the world around you. Find interesting things to draw and use your imagination. When you work in your sketchbook, sign your page with your name. You're the artist. Make sure it's on your page.